Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. Today we are going to go backward in time in order to look at some of the previous eclipses that we have had in the signs of Pisces and Virgo. The nodes of the moon go back through the same signs in reversed order every 9 and 18 years. So we'll get the north node in Virgo and south node in Pisces, and then nine years later we'll get the north node in Pisces and south node in Virgo, and then nine years later the opposite like that. So when we are looking at an upcoming lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces, it is really important to look back on those 9 and 18 year markers because eclipses are typically like, um, they have a lot of history behind them. And one of the images that a friend brought to mind recently, and I believe it may even come, it, it comes from somewhere else, but the idea that we're walking on a spiral staircase and as we walk around the spiral, we come back to previous levels and imagine it's a glass spiral staircase where you can look down and you can see, oh, I'm at the exact same spot I was like three levels down. I don't know if it's the best analogy, but we repeat things. We go back and look at things. We renew and refresh our experience of certain patterns and deepen and mature and grow as we do so. And eclipses bring up that nature of the cyclic, that which is cyclical or recurring and has a lot of history behind it. So as we prepare for the lunar eclipse in Pisces, which we will talk about in terms of its significations in a later video, uh, but today what I want to do is just go back in time. I have also uh, marked down some of the events that happened in um, my life and in the life of one friend of mine who will remain anonymous. And I'm going to give you some examples of the 9 and 18 year marks in their life and in my life so that you could use those as templates for tracking your own eclipse cycles, which I think will be really useful when it comes to uh, looking at the upcoming eclipse. So that is our agenda for today. Before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 70,000 subscribers on this channel. It is free to subscribe. Helps us grow our business and community. We really appreciate it when you watch regularly if you uh, just click the subscribe button it really helps us grow and the like button of course transcripts can be found on my website nightlightastrology.com and a couple of things coming up i'm first of all really excited to announce that our year one program which begins november 16th is now open for enrollment so go to the courses page click on the first year course join us for a one-year immersion into ancient hellenistic astrology over 12 months, you'll see everything that we learn about and study philosophically, technically. We have live clients. We practice with real people. You learn and get to study in a living lineage. And I think that is what is most exciting, is that you're studying with someone who has a very deep, embodied, long-time practice, and you get to sit with someone and watch them practice with other people and learn the techniques and theory and history and also the unique way in which I do things which you can take and use yourself or you can use as like you know creative grist for the mill and um and and come up with some of your own dynamics as well anyway 30 classes on the year we have a breakout study session led by tutors in between major units of study we have a forum discussion staff with tutors so lots of support lots of bonus material quizzes an optional certification exam at the end. You can take this if you're really serious and want to go professional and read for other people, or if this is something you're just doing for yourself. Knowing the language of astrology is an amazing asset that you can have for the rest of your life. The more you know how, how about how to read your own chart and maybe the charts of people close to you, um, the better. It's like having GPS in your car. These days, most people do. And I think that this is a great thing to develop, especially if you're already someone who's interested in astrology, but feels like there's a limit to what you know or understand. This is a great program. Anyway, you'll see at the bottom, we have a pre-registration sale. It goes until October 15th. So between now and October 15th, you can pick up an installment plan for the tuition that is on sale or the early bird payment. Those will go up significantly after October 15th. We also have tuition assistance. If you're someone who wants to take the course, you need a little help to make it happen. Use the tuition assistance button and uh, we'd be glad to help you out. If you have any questions, feel free to email us info at nightlightastrology.com and then back up to the top, go to the events page, click on live talks. Next week on September 19th, I will be giving a talk on Venus's 12 love languages. We are going to be looking at Venus through all 12 signs of the Zodiac and talking about the specific kind of karma, the specific kind of stories that Venus tells by sign in our birth chart. This is going to be great for understanding the karma of love and relationships and just getting a much deeper understanding of the sign placement of Venus in your chart or the charts of people you work with uh, if you're 
practicing astrologer or what have you. So I look forward to that as well. And on that note, I will um, we'll go ahead and get into it here. I'm getting my screen set up. All right. So let's take a look now at the real-time clock. All right. So first of all, I'm going to eliminate everything from our screen except for the nodes of the moon just to illustrate the movements. And actually, maybe I'll put the sun and moon in. Here we go. So right now we're in the midst of a Virgoan moon cycle and that moon cycle will reach will will reach the eclipse point coming up here very soon. So the lunar eclipse will be on September 17th and that will be an out of sign lunar eclipse in Pisces with a conjunction to Neptune. We'll be looking at the specifics of this uh, eclipse in a later video. Today, what I want to do is talk about the cycles involved. So if we go forward in time just a little bit, we're going to notice that the nodes of the moon actually change signs into Pisces and Virgo in February, early February. So once they change signs, then we're, we're dealing with eclipses for the most part in uh, Pisces and Virgo uh, for about a year, year and a half to come. So uh, we want to understand the first of these even though it's out of sign, it is still technically our first eclipse in Pisces. We want to understand them not only in terms of the placement in our chart by whole sign, like look at that house of Pisces, but we also want to understand them in terms of cyclical dynamics that are recurring. In order to do that, I'm going to go back 18 years to the last time that the nodes of the moon were entering Pisces. So here is the entrance of the nodes of the moon into the sign of Pisces. And you will notice that we get a lunar eclipse. I think this is kind of interesting. We get a lunar eclipse at almost the exact same degree, but opposite in Virgo, out of sign with the south node in Libra in March of 2006. I think this is fascinating um, because you can see that there's kind of like a there's a pattern that the eclipses follow. And um, I won't go through every single eclipse, but starting in about March of 2006, we start getting eclipses in these signs. Now we still have an Aries eclipse here in March of 2006 and so forth, but let's keep going and we're gonna get these, uh, we're gonna get these nodes of the moon into the next signs. So the official entrance of the nodes of the moon, I use the mean node as measurement, happens in late June of 2006. So late June 2006, nodes of the moon transfer into Pisces and Virgo, at which point now we're going to start having eclipses in these two signs, and that's going to last a while. Watch as the nodes move retrograde always through the signs. And then gradually we come out into the next series, which will be Aquarius and Leo, North Node Aquarius, South Node Leo, by January of 2008. So uh, it's about a year and a half. Now we have this time frame, though, is the time frame within which we are getting the bulk of our focused eclipses in Pisces and Virgo. So I want to um, show you an example of what was happening in my chart around that time. And I'm going to show you a friend's chart as well just so you can get some experience uh, tracking. Oops. Oh, I'm going to go back. Hold on. Let me go back in time. Let's go back to 2006. Now let's get, sorry, I'm all messed up here. All right, here we go. All right, so here's again in June of 2006 when the nodes change signs. So for me, the north node, uh, and remember, just broadly speaking, the north node placement tends to point us in the direction of things that will be amplified. That usually means that our desire body will take us in the direction indicated by the north node of the moon. And it will um, also, uh, it will also um, usually form, there'll be crystallized insights formed from past experiences coming up through the south node. The impulse toward a little bit more detachment 
or otherworldliness will typically come through the south node, whereas the investment that we have in worldly things will be amplified through the north node. That's a broad way of combining ancient Hellenistic and Indian techniques um, with regard to the nodes. Uh, in evolutionary astrology, modern evolutionary astrology, north node is the direction you're supposed to go in for the sake of evolution. The south node is the direction that we're letting go of from the past and uh, maybe forming insights around, but also the south node is seen usually as sort of regressive. I'm going to be having an interesting series of conversations with uh, a friend and colleague of mine, Ari Moshe Wolf, about the differences between Hellenistic and evolutionary astrology in the next couple of weeks. We're starting a series, so that should be interesting because it's going to be an opportunity for us to talk about some of the differences in how the nodes are used and, and stuff like that. Um, so the north node in Gemini, or excuse me, Gemini, the north node in Pisces in the 11th house. This was the placement that it landed in my chart because I'm a Taurus rising. So during this time, if I fast forward just over the bulk of these eclipses, and again, I'm not going to go into every single individual eclipse, but um, oops, here we go. If I go forward a year, two years to 2008, by the time that that is over with, during that period, two things were happening. I entered into a new community of creative writing um, uh, peers in an MFA program in Georgia. And so I was in a very artistic Piscean community of artists, um, many of whom struggled with what I would call Piscean things, <laughs> including myself at times. Um, the 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 romantic the sort of tragic romantic element of art school <laughs> that's what i would call it so anyhow there was a very piscean community that came into my life between 2006 and 8 through art school um an mfa i did in creative writing but also the reality sandwich community a community of um journalists and writers covering topics in consciousness psychedelics psychedelics as medicine um and astrology um, as a, an interest and a field came into my life. So I started uh, reading and um, getting to know astrology and astrologers, as well as uh, the reality sandwich community and a, cr a creative art community. Okay, so that period of time was significant in terms of developing and bringing me into new communities and amplifying the importance of various Communities, many of which you could just, many of whom you could describe as very Piscean. So that's the North Node in the 11th house, broadly speaking, over a couple of years of eclipses. And this is the last time that the North Node was in Pisces in my life. Pretty significant. Now, with respect to the South Node of the Moon in the 5th house. Okay, so during this period of time, uh, this is between 2006 and eight. These are the first couple of years. Um, let's see. So uh, ayahuasca shamanism came into my life in the in May of 2000. And hold on, let me make sure I've got this right. So, so, so May of 2005. May of 2005 was my first ayahuasca ceremony. So between 2006 and 8, with the South Node in Virgo in the fifth house, I was coming into the first real stretch of sobriety in my in my life since I had like, you know, been, I don't know, like a late teenager and started partying and getting into trouble. <laughs> so the South Node in Virgo in the fifth was really about curbing, um, you know, kind of like, what do I want to say? Like tempering the pleasure impulse, very fifth house. The fifth house was called the joy of Venus and the house of pleasure, as well as creative fulfillment. So there was, I was spending a lot of time in isolation, editing, revising, and working on a book about the ayahuasca experiences while also spending the first really serious stretch of my life completely sober. Uh, so that was the South Node Virgo in the fifth. Okay, so, you know, that's just very brief. Now I want to show you a friend of mine's chart. Okay, here it is. So uh, he's a Virgo rising, North Node Pisces in the seventh house during this period of time between 2006 and eight. During this time, he met and um, and married his wife. And 
had the beginnings of a um, the very first symptoms of a health issue. Okay, so that health issue is still ongoing. Um, and I'll, when I get to the current cycle, I'll tell you more, but that's the first part. Meta's wife started dealing with some health symptoms, not uncommon with the South Node in the first house to deal at times with um, difficulties around health and the body or a tendency, for example, toward dissociation, otherworldliness, or to be... Um, to be cleansing or purifying or shifting your relationship with the body and health, um, as well as identity. Um, so this was an important period of health, South Node first house and meeting his wife, North Node seventh house. So anyway, just again, just like little quick examples, look at those two houses in your chart and look back at the 2006 to eight period. That's the point. Now let's go forward and we are going to take the nodes up to we're doing 18 years right so we're going to now take them forward to north node virgo and south node pisces okay so this is 2015 and this would be about nine years later where we see the nodes of the moon transitioning into virgo and pisces in october of 2015 now let me uh, show you how long it lasts. So around the fall of 2015, the nodes changed signs. We had an out of sign eclipse and I think it was September. So in Virgo, and then the nodes of the moon stay in Virgo and Pisces all the way until about May of 2017. May of 2017. So May of 2017, and let's just start this again, October 2015 to about May of 2017. It's like a year and a half. So um, when we put this, I'm going to show you again, same examples, but now we're flipping the order of the nodes. So we kind of go into the world and our ambitions take us in the direction of Virgo, whereas we kind of, um, we have a way of uh, moving into otherworldly spaces through the south node of the moon and or crystallizing old karmic insights um, and usually gaining wisdom through the various losses or difficulties that come through the south node that's a pretty ancient or traditional understanding and the north node takes us into the world into new entanglements and ambitions and adventures but in ancient astrology that doesn't necessarily mean that it's enlightening um, it just, it means that that's where our impulses are taking us or where there's a hunger in the direction of the North node, you could say. So, um, anyhow, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is my chart again, South node Pisces 11th house. So interestingly, right as this eclipse was coming through, and the north node is in the fifth house. Uh, and we had just gotten an out of sign, but north node Virgo eclipse in the fifth. Um, my daughter was subsequently born. So fifth house, the house of children. And this entire phase coincided with the beginning of my adventures into becoming a dad and having a child. She was a Virgo rising, you know? <laughs> so, um, so we have, in other words, a, a very... Um, a, a very perfectly fitting new development that's taking me into the world through the birth of a child. Um, I find that there's there's a couple of other things that maybe go into that fifth house, um, that fifth house Virgo space, but these are the that's the big one. So I'll just leave it at that. The South Node Pisces eleventh house for me had to do with the, I, at this point, I left and dissolved my relationship with Reality Sandwich because it was, it was winding down in its period of um, significance and, and like, it just, it, it had a shelf life. And so that community was dissolving. I was also, I had just come to the conclusion that I was, as I was becoming a dad, that I was ready to be done with the psychedelic community, ayahuasca world that 
you know, if you get the message, hang up the phone, that was the moment I reached after almost 10 years. So a long period of being involved oh, like nine years earlier with this very specific psychedelic and ayahuasca communities came to a close. Interestingly, the South Node Pisces 11th house, as, as it can be oriented around spiritual communities, also introduced me to the Bhakti Yoga community by the end of these eclipses. So the South Node 11th house Pisces eclipses coincided with the end of a few communities, but also the introduction to a, a very South Node Pisces kind of otherworldly Bhakti Yoga community. North Node 5th house, everything to do with becoming a dad and starting the journey of parenting. So those are those are my past two cycles. Now let me show you my friends. So I'm going to wheel this around again so that we get now 2015 to 17 he had these nodes of the moon uh across the first and seventh house axis and was um contemplating a a divorce. Now this is about nine years after marriage that had happened under the previous one. And they survived this period. They didn't actually get divorced, but it was a very tumultuous period for the marriage. It was also a period of time where the health symptoms were getting worse and he became much more actively involved in seeking out forms of self-care and like remediation for symptoms of um, his, his poor health. So, that was the major thing that happened during this time. Now, did the marriage end? No, it made it through, uh, but very tumultuous south node going through the seventh house. North node in the first, a lot of investment in body and health. So I'm just giving you some, you know, painting with some broad brush strokes here in the hopes that you will, um, you know, kind of look at this upcoming moment with new eyes, that you can understand it as a part of patterns and stories that have history. Will the exact same things happen? No. Think of that image of a spiral staircase, right? You're moving along a higher level, but you're at the same point that you were on a lower level, something like that. I feel like that works really nicely. So I, I like that. I like that image. Anyway, it's in February that the nodes of the moon change signs. Um, I find it very interesting that my friend with the North Node in the seventh is once again on the brink of divorce. And so uh, it, there could be a very new direction that things are going in with respect to that marriage. Um, and on the other hand, his health is not doing very well again. And so it's just amazing how you can like set your clock to these things. Um, I find that you just cannot make this stuff up. Like you, you, it's, it's so amazing to see the recurring patterns. And I've said this a million times on the channel, but it makes everything that we deal with a little bit easier knowing that there's something like a beautiful piece of music that's already written. Now, does that mean that every last detail is written? No, we are actively cooperating with and using our own choices to participate in the creation of our lives. But there are also clear archetypal seasons of life and there are things that are fated and there are karmas that we are here to live and experience on all different levels and all different areas of life and through those um, fated events and destined themes as well as our choices we move through life but there is clearly a a, a way in which the direction that eclipses point us in become um, they, they become pivotal for a period of time. Now we look to my chart. I'm just looking and I'm saying, oh, what could I anticipate in my own life as a Taurus rising? Probably the continued development of new friends, allies, groups. And um, in the fifth house, you know, I'm not sure about that one. Like South Node in the fifth house as a parent with two kids, like could there be some crystallized insights and wisdom around parenting uh, perhaps? Could there also be, um, you know, more themes surrounding uh, health and the the kind of regulating of the pleasure principle? Remember, that was there for me, you know, 18 years ago. Um, I am not, I don't use drugs. I don't, you know, I don't even drink alcohol very much at all. So, but there's still like one of the things that I find really interesting is that um, 
in the world of um, bodybuilding, there's a lot to be learned about the best macro spread, the best form of diet, the best form of sleep, like fine tuning on the level of, of the body and making sure that you're also not so regulated that you don't have any fun. Um, that's an, that's a an delicate, interesting thing that I could see coming up, you know, with Virgo in the fifth, like I'm already sort of anticipating that the next couple of years might be about, um, you know, one of my sort of midlife goals, as you guys know, I've shared this on the channel before, by the end of my 45th year, I'm working slowly, but surely it is going to take several years to compete in an amateur bodybuilding competition just for fun. Some people run triathlons, you know, I just want to do this as naturally and safely and gradually like small incremental steps. That's why I'm giving myself many years to do it. Um, but it's just something fun for me to do as a personal challenge and an inner growth challenge. Um, it requires a lot of discipline when it comes to things like diet, you, but you don't want to be living several years of your life without having fun. Right. And I'll be coming into the heart of a lot of the incremental gradual training that requires being very specific with your diet. So uh, that's kind of what I'm anticipating is like, you know, that South node there will be about like, you know, the, 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 the finding the sweet spot when it comes to joy and pleasure, while also that Virgo and emphasis on like purity. So I remember like 18 years ago when the South node was in Virgo in that house, like the whole thing was like, okay, I'm not drinking anymore. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not partying. I'm not sleeping around. Like I'm practicing celibacy for the first time in my life, but how do I have fun? <laughs> you know, I was like, what, what does the fun look like at this stage in my life? So anyway, I find that with eclipses, the point I'm trying to make is that the same themes will come up in new ways. Well, it's at a different point in our life. We're not learning the exact same lessons we learned nine or 18 years ago. We're not with the same people in our lives. We're in different environments. We've grown psychically and emotionally and so forth. But there will be a familiar way in which it's like, I've been here before, you know, I've seen this. I've, I know this. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that this has been useful. Look at the whole sign houses of Pisces and Virgo. Look back during these time periods. What were the themes? What were the lessons? And with Pisces, I always think too about, you know, the, the cultivation of a sense of unity and connectedness, romance, imagination, universality, um, mysticism, and um, like artistic themes and and that, that kind of uh, otherworldly yearning or longing as qualifying some of the major periods with the North Node in Pisces. I remember, or the South Node, either way. And I remember, you know, when the South Node was in Pisces and I was shifting communities, you know, going, I was leaving the psychedelic world behind. It was like, that period of my life is done. That community is not long, no longer the main focus of my life. But then Bhakti Yoga was coming in and it still was satisfying that desire for otherworldly connection to the divine, that the same kinds of things that psychedelic mystical experiences were providing. Now this different community was providing. So sometimes it's also about transitions that address the same need, but in a new or different way or more appropriate way for the time that we're in. And Virgo, care, meticulousness, purity, service, uh, concern for doing the right thing, you know, these these lessons come in different forms in recurring seasons. So on that note, I will leave us for the day. Don't forget my talk on Venus through the 12 signs is next week. You can register for that on the website. If you can't attend live, you get a video recording of the event. First year course is open for enrollment. That pre-registration sale is good until October 15th. So be sure to take advantage of that while it's there can't wait to see a new group of people in class. It's a very auspicious time to study because you're studying right as Pluto is ingressing for the last time into Aquarius. Within a year while you're studying, Uranus will be going into Gemini. Those are fantastic combinations for um, elections, basically, for studying astrology. I think it's a great year to launch into a study of astrology. Anyway, we'll leave it there, and I hope you're having a good day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.